Okay, so let's see if we can figure out how to solve this math problem. All right, so the question is the following. Kim paid the cashier $5.65 with 25 coins of nickels and quarters. How many of each type of coin did she give the cashier? Okay, so this is the question. Feel free to use a calculator, but if you have an answer, go ahead and put that into the comment section. I'll show you the correct answer in just one second. Then, of course, I'm going to solve this problem step by step. All right, now, before I show you the answer, let's take another quick look at the question. So Kim paid the cashier $5.65 with 25 coins of nickels and quarters. How many of each type of coin did she give the cashier? All right, so let's take a look at the answer. The correct answer here is the following, three nickels and 22 quarters. All right, now, if you got this right, well, you definitely get a happy face and an A+. Plus. And if you're like, oh, Mr. YouTube Math Man, I'm totally confused on how to solve this problem. Can you help me out? Well, I definitely can. So the first step in solving any math problem is to make sure you actually understand the question. Now, a good way of doing that is to read a problem at least three times. Okay, so Kim paid the cashier uh, $5.65. Now, as you're reading the problem, you want to try to visualize or model the information. So I'm going to do it in this way. So here is Kim and she's buying something at the store. Maybe she's buying a math book, who knows? But uh, anyways, it costs $5.65, and she's paying the cashier. Now, just in case you don't know who the cashier is, this is the person that you give the money to in the store. All right, so Kim paid uh, the cashier $5.65 with 25 coins made up of nickels and quarters. All right, so if you're not familiar with U.S. currency, well, you're not going to be able to understand this problem, but this is not that difficult. I will do a quick review of what a nickel is and a quarter is in just one second, but basically these are coins. So uh, Kim used coins. Uh, some of these coins were nickels. Some of these coins were quarters to uh, pay this $5.65. Okay, so the question here is the following. How many of each type of coin did she give the cashier? So we're looking for the number of nickels and the number of quarters. All right, so once we understand the problem, what we need to do is make sure we understand basic U.S. currency, and this is not that difficult. All right, so let me just do a quick review, quick review right now. So as in uh, most currencies in the U.S., we have coins, little round things we pay stuff with. So we have four types of coins in the U.S., and then we have bills, like a dollar bill, little pieces of paper. Okay, so in terms of coins, we have pennies. We also have something called nickels, dimes, and quarters. All right, so these are the uh, four types of coins that we have in the U.S. Now, uh, the value of a penny is one cent. Now, uh, that symbol, cent, is this symbol right here. A nickel is five cents, a dime is 10 cents, and a quarter is 25 cents. Okay, so these are the four uh, coins in the U.S. Now, we also have bills, and the smallest bill that we have in the U.S. is the $1 bill. So when we're talking about dollars, we're using this symbol right here. Now, $1 is equal to 100 cents. Okay, so if you have four quarters, you have $1. If you had 100 pennies, you have $1. If you had 10 dimes, you have $1, etc. You have $1, excuse me, etc., etc. Okay, so this is all you really need to know to solve this problem. Now, let's just kind of go back to the uh, actual problem and notice that the money that we're talking about here is, is in dollars. Okay, so it's $5.65. So we want to think of nickels and quarters in terms of their dollar value. Okay, this is going to be important here in just one second. So remember, a nickel is five cents. Now there's 100 cents in a dollar. So a nickel in terms of its dollar value is going to be five over 100 or 0 0.05 of a dollar. Okay, so one nickel is worth 0 0.05 of a dollar. Now a quarter is 25 cents, so that's going to be 25 over 100 again 100 cents to one dollar so that's 0.25 so a quarter is worth 0.25 of a dollar 
Okay, so now let's go ahead and take the next step, which is to figure out how we're going to solve this problem. Now, what I'm going to do here is use algebra. Now, if some of you solve this problem without algebra, like algebra, I don't want to use algebra, Mr. YouTube Math Man. I don't like algebra. Well, if you were able to figure this out without algebra, that is fantastic. But the algebra is such a nice tool. So we have a, a, a actually two unknown values here that we're looking for, right? So we're looking for the number of nickels and the number of quarters. So in algebra, we can uh, let variables like x and y represent uh, you know, unknown values. So we might be thinking to ourselves, maybe we need two variables here, one variable x to represent the number of nickels and one variable y to represent the number of quarters. But uh, really, that's not necessary, okay? Because we know the total amount of coins is 25. So what I'm going to do is let x equal the number of quarters, and then we can come up with another expression to represent the, I'm sorry, x to equal the number of nickels, excuse me. And then we can come up with another expression uh, for the number of quarters. All right, so hopefully you understand that. And let's take a look at uh, my setup here. So x, or I'm going to let x, equal the number of nickels. Now, if we have 25 coins and X of them are nickels, well, how many quarters do we have? Well, 25 minus X, right? So if these are our nickels, uh, 25 minus the number of nickels is how many quarters we have. Okay, so these are our two expressions right here. Now, uh, these uh, expressions are not gonna do us any good by themselves. So we have this variable x, and to solve for x, we need an equation. Okay, so how can we form an equation? Well, we know that the total number of nickels plus the total number of quarters is equal to $5.65. So what we can do is set up this equation right here. So we're going to be thinking about the dollar value of these nickels and the dollar value of these quarters. Okay, so here, x is the number of nickels. Now, its dollar values, okay, how many nickels we have, is going to be the number of nickels we have times 0 0.05. So this is the dollar value of our nickels. Now, we're going to add that to how many quarters that we have. So we have 25 minus x quarters, and again, we're going to want to multiply that by 0.25 because this will give us the dollar value of our quarters. But we know that the dollar value of our nickels plus the dollar value of our quarter quarters, excuse me, is equal to five dollars and sixty-five cents. All right, so what we need to do here is solve this equation: x times 0 0.05 plus 25 minus x times uh, 0.25 is equal to 5.65. Okay, so the first step that I'm going to take now, it's not necessary that you take this step right here. But what I'm going to do is multiply the entire equation by 100. Now, uh, you don't have to do this, but this is just kind of a nice, easy trick to get rid of these uh, decimals. Again, feel free to use your calculator. But uh, if you want to solve this equation in another manner, that's perfectly fine. But uh, my first step here in just one second is to multiply this entire equation by 100 to get rid of these decimals. Now, before we continue on, please consider hitting that subscribe button. This really does help me help as many people as possible on YouTube. Also, make sure to check out my full library of math courses. Now, in every single one of my courses, I give you a full detailed lesson on every single topic. I also cover thousands of problems with full detailed video solutions. I have a ton of additional worksheets, online quizzes so you can get ready for tests, and even printable and downloadable notes so you can study offline. All right, so if you want a great, clear, and understandable way to learn math, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. Okay, so now we need to solve this equation for x. But uh, before we do that, let's just quickly review what this means. So remember, x is the number of nickels that Kim has, and 25 minus x is the number of quarters. But uh, what we're interested in is the dollar value of all these nickels and quarters. So if you have x number of nickels and you multiply that by 0 0.05, this is the dollar value of all those nickels. And if you have 25 minus x quarters and you multiply that by uh, 0.25, this is the dollar value of all those quarters. 
and the total value of all these nickels and quarters is 565. Okay, now here is our lovely equation. And if we solve this equation for x, this is the number of nickels that Kim has. Now, you can just solve this equation right here. And some of you might be saying, hey, Mr. YouTube Math Man, I'm not a big fan of uh, working with decimals. Is there a better way to solve this equation? Well, actually, you can use a little bit of a trick here. Now, you can, again, just start solving this equation with decimals. There's nothing wrong with that. But if we multiply the entire equation by 100, so this is all the terms in the equation. Remember, in algebra, you can pretty much do what you want to an equation as long as you do it equally to uh, all sides or all terms in the equation. But uh, if we multiply everything by 100, what's going to happen is all the decimal points are going to move over two places to the right. So instead of a uh, 0 0.05, we'll have a 5. Instead of a 0.25, we'll have a 25. And instead of a 5.65, we'll have a 565. Okay, so let's go ahead and get into, get into this right now. Again, this is an optional step. You don't have to do this, but I think it'll make our life a bit easier. All right, so 100 times 0 0.05 uh, x. Remember, this is a product x times 0 0.05. So 100 times uh, x times 0 0.05 is 5x. 100 times this 0 0.25 is 25. So we'll take that and multiply it by uh, 25 minus x. And then 100 times 5.65 is 565. Okay, so now we have this lovely linear equation without these decimals. Okay, so again, this is an optional move, but uh, whether you work with the decimals or you uh, kind of adjust your equation to look like this, either way, you'll get the same answer. Okay, so the first thing we need to do here is the distributive property. So 25 times 25 is 625 and 25 times this x is negative 25x. All right, so we have some like terms. So 5x and negative 25x, we can combine. That's negative 20x. All right, so we have 625 minus 20x is equal to 565. So what we need to do now is subtract 625 from both sides of the equation. Now, if you're having difficulty with this equation, uh, I'll give you some suggestions in just one second. But uh, let's continue on. So uh, 565 minus 625 is negative 60. All right, so now we have negative 20x is equal to negative 60. And to solve this equation, all we have to do is divide both sides of the equation by negative 20. All right, so negative 60 divided by negative 20, a negative div uh, divided by negative is a positive. So the answer here is x is equal to 3. Okay, so whether you work with decimals or you multiply uh, multiplied everything in the equation by 100, you'll still get the answer x is equal to 3. All right, so let's go ahead and actually answer the question. So how many nickels does Kim have? Well, remember, x is the number of nickels that uh, we said that she has. So that is 3, and 25 minus, 25 minus x is the number of quarters. So that's 25 minus 3, which, of course, is 22. All right, so this is an example of a basic algebra uh, word problem using or involving linear equations. So this is the type of problem that you're going to face in like a first-year algebra course. So hopefully this video helped you out, but uh, if you need additional help in algebra, check out these two courses right here. So I'm going to leave uh, links to both of these in the description of this video. So my first course is my pre-algebra course, and the second course I'm going to suggest is Algebra 1. So pre-algebra is kind of like basic algebra, okay? In Algebra 1, you know, you pretty much study what's in pre-algebra and obviously uh, some more advanced topics as well. Okay, so if this video helped you out, don't forget to like and subscribe. And with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your math adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.